I meet a lot of anglers at the boat ramp who say, I have never used a flipping rig or a punching rig to catch bass. Well, you've come to the right place because I can help you with that. As we talked about in the last video, I love flipping and punching. And it's one of the things, to be perfectly honest, I am really good at. And so what we're gonna do today is we're gonna break down and we're gonna be really specific about it. This video is gonna be all about flipping and punching to go through the canopy. You know, as this grass grows up, it gets high, it gets thick. It's a great opportunity to catch fish in a super intense way. We're gonna break down rod and reel setup, what baits you need, how to set it up, what kind of rigs do you actually use, and how do you adjust that rig for where you're fishing? And we're gonna talk punching. I love talking punching. So if you like this kind of stuff or you wanna learn and you're one of those guys that wants to learn about flipping and punching, this is the video for you. So let's do it. That's swimsuit girl's fault, right there. This is braid dangling around in front of me. And we're gonna talk about that in a minute. But if you guys enjoy no FBS videos and real fishing, talking techniques that can expand your range of fishing and catch you more bass, go down there, hit that like and subscribe button. But let's talk about what a punching rig is first, just to break that down and, and sort of start with the basics, because I think that's important. When I think of a punching rig, I think of a big weight, just like this. This is a hog tech tungsten weight. So we use tungsten because we are using bigger weights to punch through whatever kind of cover it is. Um, it makes it more compact and just makes the process of punching through more efficient. My usual go-tos are anywhere from one ounce to 1.5 ounce. I've used up to two, two and a quarter ounce, but usually a 1.5 for the canopy situations is what gets you through. You also see that we have a straight chain hook right there. That is a hack attack straight shank hook. It is a four odd. I like to run a little bit smaller straight shank hook um, because it just makes that presentation more compact, thus leading to it being more easy or efficient at getting through that cover. You'll notice too, that whenever I let that weight bump down on the hook, that hook kicks up. And that's because we have it tied on with a snell knot. And you can see that snell knot sort of tied around the base of the hook. If you go way back in the Mikey Balls archive, there is a very good video, I will say so myself, of how to tie a snell knot. My duddy, my buddy, my duddy, very nice. My buddy Donnie Bass uh, taught me a real simple way to tie a snell knot. And I think it's probably the easiest, most efficient way to tie it. So above that, you'll see we have two bobber stoppers. And this is something I always get questions about. Why two? Well, when you're fishing all this thick cover in that, these bobber stoppers have a tendency to sort of burn off or tear off. So once again, my buddy Donnie Bass told me put two on because that way if one burns off, you still got one and you don't have to retie immediately in order to replace it. Because oftentimes we're either into fish, we're in our flow, or we're fishing a tournament, we don't really have time to retie. I got all that stuff on to, this is 80 pound um, samurai braid. Uh, as I mentioned in the video before, the reason I was using this is because I need a quieter presentation. I'm only fishing around a mer um, sorry, submergent vegetation, hydrilla, milfoil, um, eelgrass, Grass, softer sort of grasses that are underwater. This braid is not good for, and I will say again, not good for fishing around wood, cane, harder emergent type um, cover. But for just straight grass, it's excellent. Uh, punching rigs, for the most part, operate the best using braided line, no stretch line. And that's because you're going through a lot of grass, a lot of thick cover, and you really don't want any stretch in that line because when you set the hook, that fish is gonna dive into the thickest stuff. And if you have stretching lines such as fluorocarbon or monofilament, you're gonna lose that fish because he's gonna get the best of you and power down, which leads directly to our next topic. So what, what rods do you use? Well, my favorite rod for punching through canopied stuff right now is this 7-Eleven Heavy Halo TI. The reason I like a little bit longer rod is it gives you a little bit of extra leverage on these fish. Um, it makes the weight a lot more easy to handle kind of as you're pitching and flipping. It also gives you a little bit more tip. I like a slightly softer tip. I don't go to the, the extra heavy, the super like pool cue, super broomstick rods that a lot of guys like. I really think those, those rods overpower um, the fish. It, it can pull the hook out of the fish. It can also cause you to not feel a bite because a lot of bites you really don't even feel. The rod just kind of loads up. And granted, a tip on a 7-Eleven Heavy 
is not super flexible, but it has just a little bit of enough play to feel if there's something sort of like dead weight holding onto it and, and there's tension that's being created and the rod loads up a lot better. Um, so that really, oftentimes with the Snell, um, if you guys watch the last video really close, you don't even need to set the hook. You just kind of reel down and you sort of sweep and pull and that Snell kicks out the hook. So if you have a fairly stiff backbone rod with some nice tip, the rod really does the work for you itself. Uh, but in general though, I'd recommend a rod slightly longer than 7.6, 7.8, 7.9, 7, 7 7.11, even eight foot, some guys like it. I think those eight foot rods get a little tip heavy, but a heavy action is probably the best way to go, uh, especially if you're dealing with the thicker grass that, that you usually run into when you're punching. I have a standardized, super old school, <laughs> not standard at all, it's the Zebra Corrado. You know, real wise, I, I don't know what I'd recommend to you. All I can say is when it comes to new reels, you want a reel that's probably price pointed over $180, $200. You need a reel that can hold up that's a beast. This is the old 200E series. I have beat the living bleep out of these guys and they still hold up. I have a custom Hogtech handle on there. It's a little bit wider and a little bit more stout. I like that. It's an added feature. You don't need it, but it sure makes like pitching and like reeling that bait out pretty quick. Uh, a lot easier. The other thing that you want to keep in mind, the the one thing I'm losing with this reel is speed. This is, I think, a 7 to 1 or something like that. What's the gear ratio? 7 0 1. Um, speed of getting the bait out is super important because punching, flipping in general is all about making drops, presenting your bait as many times as possible because it's sort of it's like a statistics game. The more drops you make, the, the higher likelihood that you're, you're going to get bit. Uh, so where that, that high speed reel comes in handy is two things, getting the bait out and making another pitch super fast. The other thing that you'll find when you start playing around with this technique is oftentimes fish will grab the bait and they'll dart off. Even if you're under this giant mat of canopied grass, they'll dart off four or five feet. And in order to pick up that line fast enough before they drop the bait, because you're using such a heavy weight, you need to, you need to reel a whole bunch. So having a super high speed reel will sort of I don't know, quicken that process. And basically you'll have to make less reel turns in order to set up to, to actually set the hook. So that's your basic setup. What kind of cover are we looking at? Well, I'm gonna kind of overlay some videos and, and show you. In general though, the, the concept of punching means you're kind of going through the vegetation. Whether that's totally canopied out floating vegetation, whether that's grass that has come and grown to the surface and created sort of an umbrella for the bass, or whether that's even stuff that's, that's not super duper thick on the top, but as you look down, it's super thick down there. You're basically sort of punching through that vegetation and getting through and getting under and getting deep into it where those fish tend to hide. And they tend to hide there for a couple reasons. To protect themselves from the sun, to get out of the way as an ambush point, to catch brim and bass and eat, or I'm sorry, to catch brim and shad and sort of like stalk those things. You know, bass are really stalking sort of I don't know, sneaky predators. So if they can hide in a little dark corner or something and pop out and eat something, it's a perfect setup. What happened in the last video that you guys saw is I saw a million brim all around these, these grass clumps. And that indicated to me that there's a ton of bait here. So these bass are setting up on these grass clumps and they're inside them or on the very close edges of them. And they're jumping out and grabbing these brim. And that's why we had them so dialed in. It, that was a fun bite. But just think about super thick grass, temperatures are high. It also works really well in spring if you have early grass. Um, usually that comes in a bit shallower. Um, they'll use it as a staging point. You know, they, they'll lock up in it because cold fronts go through in spring. Um, there's a lot of people fishing, shallow water gets super pressured, and those fish are trying to move up to spawn. So they'll try to find some kind of stable, thick cover to sort of situate themselves in. And uh, they'll set up and they'll actually stay there, especially if you get a few fronts. So it's a great way to tap that super shallow water cover as well as stuff a little bit deeper as we kind of work into summer. It's also a great bite in fall. Here on Gunnersville and the TVA, the grass is super high, it gets all cheesed out, and some of the best punching that we see comes along in fall. But there is a window in summer that is absolutely epic. So next, we know what the setup is, what the rig is, where to put it. And if you guys got any questions of where you're actually gonna fish it, go back to the last video I just put up. It's a great example. I go in depth with some underwater shots as to where, what we're looking for. And stay tuned for the next few videos. We're gonna do a hyper-focused 
punching sort of series because it's something I know a lot about, a lot of intricacies. We can get really granular with it. And that's the kind of videos and the, the kind of fishing content that I like to do. So watch some of the old stuff. Stay tuned. If you guys want to dig in the archives, there's a bunch of stuff there. But the big question that you're asking now is what kind of baits? So in my opinion, it's more about having a bait that's darker in complexion, whether it's green pumpkin, black and blue, green pumpkin swirl. I think matching sort of the dark silhouette, uh, Miles talked about it in our video with Smallmouth, Mar matching that dark silhouette that they're going to see under that mat is much more key. Now you can play around with colors and that, I'm gonna show you some different colors that I have, but in general, think dark trying to create a silhouette and then you can play off that depending on the clarity of water. But to be perfectly honest, and it's no lie, like you hear it a lot, if there's one color flipping bait to buy, I don't care how clear your water is, it's black and blue, which this isn't, lol. But black and blue is the best. Whether it's a swirl like this back at you, or something along those lines, you can never go wrong with black and blue, and you'd be amazed. Gin, clear water, you flip a black and blue deal in there and they'll eat it. I don't know why, but I think it has to do with that, that silhouette or that, that shadow that's created. So what are some baits? You know, everybody always talks about creature baits, so we'll start with those, and then I'm gonna show you a couple kind of nuanced things. What I've been catching a lot of fish on lately is the stinger. Um, I think there's a couple reasons for that. One, that profile on that bait looks exactly like the brim that I'm seeing around um, these grass clumps. It has some kicker legs. We're in warmer water months, um, so I want like a little bit of kicking action. It kicks as it goes down. It's also super slender. Um, so especially the fish that I've been fishing, they're not really knocking the bait. They're just kind of holding it. So it's hard to feel the bite. That slender deal with that snelled hook allows the hook to pop out pretty easy. Some other ones, and it's actually the black and blue example that I showed you, a why not. This has a little bit thicker body. Once again, a creature bait. The big difference that you'll see between creature baits is whether they have a kicking action or whether they're a more glide style bait like this, where it's simply a paddle or an appendage that sort of glides the bait down instead of kicking. I'm sure it, it vibrates a little as it goes down, especially ones that have ridges and things along those lines. But that's the big kind of difference that you gotta figure out when it comes to creature baits. Do they want it kicking? or do they want it gliding? And that translates to the same thing when you're talking about craw bait. My favorite craw bait, and I've showed it to you guys a million times, if I'm going to a craw bait, I'm going to this guy. It's a BB Cricket, it's super compact. You'll be amazed how clean you can get through something. Say you got a one and a half on, and you're using, say, a stinger or a beaver or something, and you're having some trouble getting through, if you put this on the same one and a half, your bait will just slide on through. And it's because of the compact nature, the way the appendages are set up. But this would be another example of a glide, or I would even go as far to say as a do nothing type crawl bait. You know, sometimes, especially late in the summer, this is what they want. They don't want as much action. They don't want as much kick. I will tell you down in Florida in spring when these fish are moving up, there is no better punch bait. They don't want that much action. I think a lot of times they're eating little grass shrimp or maybe little crayfish that are under the grass. But the BB Cricket, if you got one crawl bait to go to, that's it. Uh, the other fun one that I got in the, in the crawl section is a little mod that I do. You guys will recognize this guy. It's a, uh, a credit crawl from Culprit. It's got those same kind of cool appendages that a BB Cricket has, but it has a little bit more girth um, in the main plastic. Now it has these kicking legs. I hate these kicking legs. So what I do, and I was doing this, I think they have an Incredicrawl or something that does this now, but I just rip them off and it's literally the same bait, but those, basically those dangly or ribbon, tile, ribbon tail type appendages tend to get caught up on grass or caught up on any kind of goo that's up there. And literally this punching, flipping and pitching, whether it's punching or where you're pitching open kind of areas that we're gonna talk about in some of the videos moving forward, is all about drops and efficiency. And the less time that you're picking goo and grass off your bait means the more drops you're making and hopefully the more fish you're catching because you're increasing your numbers. One little sneaky one that I'll show you, and this is a shout out to Glenn Brown. Um, sadly, he passed away a couple years ago. He is the punching master of Florida. He used to live around Ocala, but that man could flip like no other. And this is something he loved to do that does not get enough love. It's an old school trick. This is a five inch paddle tail, or is it five or four inch? Five inch. It's a five inch paddle tail worm. And we've talked about modding this worm by cutting the tail. 
In this case, you don't cut the tail. This is a glide style bait. And as you guys know, a lot of times fish will eat something depending on how wide it is. So a lot of times you'll find the fish that are in a negative mood, they don't want that wide, broad beaver style or like creature style bait. This is a super finesse way to punch. You put this on the exact same setup that we were talking about with a snell hook and you can punch on through. Just like the BB Cricket, it gets through super duper easy and clean. It's easy to punch super thick stuff with it. Hook pops out pretty easy, which can be good if, if they're biting light. It's annoying if the stuff is thick and that hook keeps popping out. But it's, it's a great bait to pull out. You'll notice too, once again, black and blue. It's a perfect match for, for you know, like being in the shadows, being in that. The other thing that I absolutely love, and these are my old DNM ones. I don't know if they still make them. I think Big Bite Baits makes them now. But this is the, the Big Mama, I think it's called. It's a classic beaver style bait. Um, it's got some little paddles on it, and then it's got these big paddles. This is sort of an example of a fused gliding style flipping bait, as well as a kicking bait. These paddles, although they're super flat, do end up kicking a bit as they go down. I have caught a ton of big fish on this thing. For some reason, the compactness and the way it's set up, it also holds the snell really well in super thick stuff. But this is one of my sneaky ones. I think you can buy a bulk on Tackle Warehouse. Plus, I'll put um, links to all this stuff on Tackle Warehouse if you wanna go check out the colors or learn more about the baits or whatever down in the description box. But this is an awesome sneaky one that I got. I also got some old school sneaky stuff, but we're gonna save those for the next video. That's kind of a wrap. There's a lot of different options on baits. Don't get me wrong. Uh, what you want to think about though is size of your presentation. You want it to be a little more compact uh, because you're trying to get through that canopy and that's really the most important part of the process. Punching on through and getting a clean entry so that, that bait and that, that weight can go flying down there and really it's a reaction strike. So that's why it matters whether it's sort of the glide, whether it goes really quick and smooth, or whether it has some kick that slows it down. That's why you gotta kinda play with your falls a little bit because you will get some bites popping the bait up and pumping it, especially in spring or colder water periods like fall. But I found in summer for the most part, and really the most part across the year, that drop is the literally the most important part of the process. If you don't get bit on that drop, your statistics or your odds of getting bit go way down unless there's some sort of, I don't know, secondary aspect to the bite, super cold front, you know, suspended fish, maybe they're up high in the grass. But that's super technical stuff and that's stuff you'll learn as you go through the process and as you watch more Mikey Balls videos because I have a bunch of punching videos. But get yourself a soft plastic creature bait, maybe some craws, dark colors, grab some braid, a big weight. You can adjust the weight size depending on the thickness of cover. In general, Hydrilla uh, Chopgrass Max, a 1.25 to 1.5 will get you through. When you start talking about, say, milfoil and some of those softer submergent grasses, you can usually get away with anywhere from a three quarter to a one ounce. But that'll get you started. Grab a snail hook and go dip your cricket in it. It is a fun fun way to catch fish. You will be hooked after your first or second bite, I guarantee it, because it is a blast. Dragging them out of the goo, that thunk when they eat it, it's a lot of fun. But if you guys got any questions about it, definitely drop them down in, um, in the comments box. I, I love to answer them, and I'm, there's a lot of guys who are really good anglers who watch these videos, and I'm sure they will interact and help you out too. But get yourself out there. I hope you guys are catching bass in summer. I'll get bog a pat for you. Tight lines till next time. We'll see you out on the water, back in the garage, doing some talks about Shit!